joining me mid-session on a lake in Essex that needs no introduction, the Manor. Lake that's been around forever, for years. You know, big carp fishing, biggest names in fishing are fished on here over the years. Uh, it's during the winter, I was on a WhatsApp group, there was three or four of us having a chat, what you're doing next year, where you're fishing, what you're gonna do. And uh, it was Dave Levy actually mentioned, what about the Manor? I said to him, I fancied something different. I've been fishing a real low stock, rock hard water, where sort of two, three bites a season was good. You know, and I said I fancy something a bit different, something a bit more prolific. And uh, he said, what about the manor? And I thought, yeah, that sounds all right, I've, you know, never been there. So Dave put a phone call out and yeah, got offered a ticket and on we come, basically. There's actually three of us joined at the same time, all from Kent. We sort of had a good chat about it and done some research and, you know, obviously these fish are known boy the eaters, shall we say. So we sort of, uh, got together and we hatched a little plan and it's been a good year. We've all caught really, really well. We've all caught some really, really good fish. A lot of effort, a lot of graft gone into it. It's not just a case to turn up and chuck them out and catch them, you know. It's been a, a work in progress, shall we say, where we've all worked together through WhatsApp chatting and groups and baiting spots and back, you know, helping each other out. We've had a rather good year so far. We're only six months into it, so deal fishes through the winter. It's got quite a good winter form, this lake, so if no other tickets come up, I could stay on and do a bit longer, but to start, you know, the first six months really have blown me away how good they've been. So the ticket started, I think it was April 12th. Keen as mustard, got up here before light on the first day and uh, there was only two people on, which I was quite surprised. I thought the first day of a new ticket might be busy, but found some fish showing and I actually got lucky and caught one the first afternoon. So I was buzzing, start of a new, you know, new campaign, new lake, didn't really know much about it. Great start. And as it's progressed, it's just got better and better for us really. Like I say, the three of us have been on here. We've baited heavy at times, really heavy. At other times, not as much. It's dependent on other people, it's busy. You know, it can be a busy, busy fishery at times, but summer's been really good. I must say that there's been, I fish normally Tuesday Wednesdays, and there's been sort of four of us constantly fishing them days, and they've been superb lads, they really have. Not many places this day and age where there's no sort of bitterness and sort of a bit of jealousy. There's been none of that on here this year. It's been Lee's fishing here, I'll leave an empty swim next to him, and I'll go next swim down. No sort of jumping in, trying to encroach on you. Everyone sort of gave each other enough space to actually angle and go about your fishing how you wanted, you know. One of the lads done quite a bit of time in the middle pads. Everyone just left him to it, let him crack on in there. And he, he caught his fair share of fish, and he had a good year as well. So it's been really, really refreshing to fish a lake with a good bunch of lads that have all appreciated everyone's catching, you know. It's, it makes a change, I think, nowadays. There's been no no bitterness at all, it's been quality. When everyone got lucky and caught one of the bigger ones, handshakes, well done mate, good angle, you know, how it should be, how carp fishing should be really, it's been refreshing. So I knew it was a deep lake, you know. You only have to go on Google, you can find out a bit, read some articles, watch a few videos. So I knew it was deep, sort of 25, 26 foot in places in the middle. So I knew that a lot of it was closer in fishing. And we sort of come open-minded and just started fishing for bites. But as it's progressed on, it's been bottom of the shelf fishing. So sort of, being honest, five, six wraps is sort of an average sort of range. And we've been very, very particular finding real clean uh, clay areas at the bottom of the shelf. And like I say, at times we've really baited heavy. You know, the week they spawned, it shut for a week or 10 days. And I think in that week period, between me and my mate Topper, I think we've done something like 140 kilo of bait. But you've got to remember, there's probably 70 carp in here and a big head of big fish. You know, there's a lot of female carp, they spawn right out. So we give them a couple of days and then we really, we both, I mean, I live in Dover, it's an hour and a half drive to get here. So I drove up and, uh, yeah, I filled it in. I had loads of bait with me and I proper let them have it. Not just boily, we had pellets, park cool, boily, everything, and just filled it in really. Got some spots proper rocking. 
and it's paid off, you know. We've had some mental sessions. I mean, one trip in particular, we swim, I'm in it now actually, called the Garden, and uh, the fish kept turning up here, and you'd move on them and they'd go. And there weren't really much, like, in real feeding spots, so we sort of had a lead around, found a spot, I gave them a good hit of bait, probably put 15, 20 kilo out. The mate top had come and done a couple of days afterwards. He'd done the same, another big hit of bait. And then I turned up and caught five off them spots, you know, they were queuing up out there. He come and then he caught, and then our other mate Alex, he come and he had a hit of five out of here as well. You know, and everyone was catching. You know, that's one thing I would say with the baiting, it's not only helped us. Yes, we've caught our fair share and done well, but the other lads, the fish are all up in weight this year. They're looking really healthy. You know, the other lads have all caught them and they've all said like, it's been a mega year, you know, the fish have been right on it. And I think that's due to the amount of bait that we've sort of applied throughout the season. It's sort of helped everyone, I think, and the fish and the fishery. Rig wise it's sort of changed as we went along. To start with, I was fishing smaller leads and sort of rotator rigs with pop-ups but you sort of sit and watch everyone around you and it soon become quite apparent that 90% of the lake was fishing pop-ups. And then we started fishing these clay spots that were really clear and hard and rigs changed. You know, I'm now using like uni lead clips with five ounce leads, big heavy leads, short, stiff hook lengths and wafters. I've had most of my fish this year on wafters, which is probably a little bit different to what most people have done on here over the last years. Seems that a lot of people um, catapult or cut the pouch rules or boilies out and fish hinges or chods over them. I think if you look back on the history of the manor, it's been fished a hell of a lot like that, spreading boilies and fishing chods and hinges. I've not done any of that. Like, my baiting's been spawn. I've spawned every week and I've caught over spawns, you know, tighter patches. Probably a little bit, like I say, a little bit different to what a lot of people have done. I've had 50, uh, lost a couple, lost three. I think Topper's had 25 and Alex has had 25 as well. So between us, in six months, we've had 100 carp out of here, which is like madness really, isn't it? Moon phases, the big ones with the moon phases. It's been, especially the last couple of months, like coming into autumn, it's mid-October now, but like big fish, that period, a few days before either a new or a full moon, it just does flurries of real big ones. Like, and it's a joke, it would do sort of, well the other week, two weeks ago, I had a 48 and a 45, my mate Dave had a 48, someone else had a 39, it, was, it does like five or six bites and they're all massive, you know, it's, it's an insane water, it really is. I think we was talking earlier Rich and we worked out something like tw 10 to 12 fish over 45 pound at the moment which for a small lake is just a joke, isn't it really? It really is. And they're nice, you know, if you, some of them are really, really nice fish. If they were in a low stock, big pit lake, people would be screaming like mad about them. They are absolute weldy, some of them. Out of the 50 that I've caught, I've actually only had four commons. And now there is four commons in here that are probably around 45 pound at the moment. Um, all being well, I've got another ticket hopefully starting mid-November-ish. I want to be done by then. So if I can catch one or two of these mid-40 commons before then, I will be buzzing. One of them's potentially going to be £50 as well, the big Simo common. I've not had that. My mate Alex has had it at 46-something. But it's just getting bigger and bigger as it's coming. You know, it's, I think the next capture, it will probably be £50. You know, then you've got the Bring, that's sort of 46, that's one of the old ones, and the Middle Simo and the Little Simo, which will probably both be, again, sort of 44 to 46, 47 pound, you know. They are big, big, big carp. But, I've, like I say, we've applied a fish mill this year, a new test bait from Mainline. Kev's been superb, like, I want to thank him for the support that he's given us, you know. Without that, we couldn't do it put a lot of bait in, but we've also tried to do it not to mess other people up. So there's been loads of times where I've had a load of bait that I want to put in, but I can't because it's going to ruin the bloke next to me or, you know, in the summer, 
There was a quite a few periods where it seemed on a Thursday, the lake was like empty, no one here, one person. So that was perfect. I was like bringing extra bait to load up. Then I'm back on Tuesday and it, you know, all the boys will be down at the weekend and I can say, lads, I filled in, you know, I've baited these spots and then they come down and when they leave on a Sunday, they hang around and if there's a chance, they do the same for me, you know, and it's, that's how we've worked it. We've really worked together as a team and, you know, we've all benefited. They have really got on this bait. They've smashed loads of it, you know, at times. At times, you cannot put enough boilie in this place, I'm telling you. But, again, it's not like a normal venue. At times, like, you'll see them in a group. These big ones quite often are together, and you'll see a group come by in the summer when they're up in the water, and there'll be, like, 10 fish, and the smallest one might be 35. You know, it is ridiculous. You imagine them start feeding and they're troughing, they can get through a fair old bit of bait. So at times, yeah, we've given it to them this year at times and it's paid off for everyone. Like I said earlier, you know, it's not just us. Yes, we've got our lines, you know, our fair share, but the other lads have all caught some mega fish and they're all big and looking healthy, which is testament to the bait, I think. Yeah, there's a couple of catches that definitely stand out. And um, one trip I turned up, a few people here, I ended up, I actually done a night in this swim. I see a few fish fizzing, done a night in here, but they weren't really, they'd, they'd moved and they weren't really here. So I decided like, I've got to get on my toes, got to try and find them. Knew the wind was due to come and blow down to the other end. So I sort of got in there thinking, I'll get set up, get my spot sorted, ready for the wind to change and hopefully move some fish in. And yeah, it just went, went perfectly. Sometimes you get it right, don't you, in carp fishing. And that was one of them moments where the weather man was right, everything went right, the fish come in and it went what, you know, went well. Uh, first afternoon, I had a fish called Baby Stella, 43 something. Love, you know, bit of a regular one. It comes out quite a bit, that one, but it was the first time I caught it, so I was buzzing. Then about an hour later, I had a 35. Nothing through the night, which is quite normal for that corner. They moved out, but the next morning they moved back in. Uh, I had a 20. Then I had a real nice one, one of the ones I really wanted to catch fish called the Pound Coin. Only does one or two bites a season. Real, real nice dark mirror, uh, 45. And then I finished it off with like a koi type thing, you know, <laughs> not what I'm here for, but yeah, another fish. But it was just one of them 24 hour periods where it all clicked in perfectly. Another trip a few weeks ago turned up. Again, that was on the moon phase. And this trip that I'm talking about was on the moon phase, build up to the moon. Turned up, nice bit of weather, been baiting a swim, like prepped an area, got in there, had to wait for someone to go. He moved out, I went in there. Um, unlucky for him, but I turned up, and by, by luck, the fish did turn up as well, you know? And within two or three hours, I had a mental fight with this fish, fish called Falco's, and it weighed 48 pound, which was massive, you know? It's not been anywhere near that. We weighed it twice, we were like, it can't be. It was like, it is, it was like, it's just massive, it just looked huge. That fish we'd already caught actually, Alex had caught it, I think he caught it at 42, eight weeks previous. And uh, in Alex's picture, it's actually got like the, a rib sticking out of it. In my picture, it's that fat, you can't see the rib. It's just like blow up, it's like massive. He, the front end of it was huge in the net. So I was well chuffed with that. And then the next morning, um, they turned up again, started fizzing up. I actually filmed the bite on my phone because they started fizzing up right near the rod and I thought, that's gonna go. Put the phone on it, yeah, and within a couple of minutes it pulled up tight and I played in and uh, yeah, bit of a story for that as well. So I'm playing this fish, got it in close, see it rolled, another nice one called the Tiger Lin, mid 40-ish, it should, you know, it was gonna be a mid 40. Not a regular one, not one that gets caught a lot, real, real nice one. There was a little bit of silkweed on one of my lead, uh, bits of putty up my line, was just tapping the surface, and all of a sudden this little jack about that big exploded, whoosh, grabbed it, and I was like, no! And I'd had it happen once before, and I kept the pressure on it, it actually bit me off. So I just opened my bail up and just stood there, like a slack line, thinking, oh my God, I've got a mid-40 on, and a jack tangled on the line, like, what am I gonna do? So I left it a few seconds, felt like ages, sort of wound down to it a little bit and give it a pull, and, uh, thinking, oh my God, is it going to cut me off? And it was still there, so I just opened the bail arm again and just stood there thinking, please, just let go. You know, the last thing I wanted was that to break me line and, 
a mid 40 swim off with a bit of gear with it. And luckily I left it a few seconds, cranked down, wound down to it. The pike had let go of the weed and I just slowly played it in like an absolute woman because I was thinking, now I've got some really damaged line. And I, I managed to get it in and sure enough, there it was, mid 40, beautiful carp. And when I put it back, I checked my line, I had a foot of line that was absolutely destroyed. Like if I'd have pulled it hard, I'd have snapped it. So it just shows, you know, that quick thinking really, really helped put a mid 40 on the bank. So that was a 48 and a 45 in 12 hours. So yeah, mega, mega trip that one. I turned up yesterday to do this piece, October the 10th and it, something like that, Rich. 26 degrees, I'm in shorts and t-shirts. You're sitting there now behind a camera, 21 in a pair of shorts. Last night you turned up, what's up? you got down here about five, didn't you, half five this morning? In shorts, it's 16 degrees. It's like, I don't think I've ever known an autumn like it. The leaves are all turning, it looks beautiful, but the water's still warm it's so low that's one thing i would say with this place anyone coming here be prepared for a massive water drop you know i think it's probably done six foot this year from when we started and the lake just keeps seems to get smaller and smaller and smaller it's amazing how this lake it's not very big probably six eight acres something like that but the volume of water turnover every year is just incredible it really is and it happens year on year to the fish it's not you know normal this must be Maybe that's something to do with why the fish are in such good condition and they live for a long time. You know, that Stella, that's been around for, there's a couple of the Averys as well. They've been around for years, you know, and Stella must have had tons of boilies over the years. I dread to think, because she's a friendly old thing now, I dread to think how much bait that fish has had over the years, but she's still going and she still gets caught. She got caught the other week, 45. And you think it must be something to do with the quality of the water. So when I come on here, I did have sort of, I, I worked out, spoke to Dave and that, and we knew that the year before, I think the, the top lad, you know, the boat had caught the most. I think he'd had something like 28, 30 fish. So I was like, realistically, if I can catch 30, I've had a really good season. Because, you know, that the year before, that obviously was the best that anyone done. So I sort of come on with like, if I can catch 30 in a whole year, I've done well. And it's just blown us away how well we've done, you know. I'm on 50 now, and we're six months in got another six months fishing if I want it. I don't know, you know, whether I do or not, I don't know. So yeah, if I could catch one or two of these commons before I go, I'm more than happy to walk away and think, yeah, I had a really good year in there. Enjoyed it, met some really good blokes. Hopefully stay in touch with them, which is one of the best things with carp fishing when you travel around a bit. Every lake you meet different people and you sort of make friends with them and you keep in touch with them. And that's, that's how it should be, you should always, get on with people, try and do your best and all enjoy the same thing. We've all got the same passion at the end of the day. We all love carp fishing. So it's better to be here and be friendly with people than everyone thinking like, oh, it's that so-and-so over there. And you know, I don't want to be known like that. That's the last thing I want. I want to be like, yeah, he's all right. He ain't a bad lad. Catches a few carp and enjoys himself. That's a good way of, you know, being known, I think. <laughs>